Hi, I'm Tommy Whitelaw, National Lead for Caring and Outreach at the Health and Social Care Alliance Scotland. And today I'll be in conversation with Dr. Jude Marshall. Uh, welcome, Jude. Really looking forward to chatting with you today. Yep. Firstly, can you tell me about your role across realistic medicine and across Glasgow? Absolutely. So I am a GP by training and I'm usually based in Drumchapel Health Centre. But I'm currently working in a new service as a GP with a special interest in hospital at home in Glasgow City. And I'm also the clinical lead for realistic medicine for Greater Glasgow and Clyde for primary and community care. That's a lot. <laughs> That's a lot, a lot there. Thank you for that. What does supporting shared decision making look like within your team? So in hospital at home, we feel that every step involves shared decision making. So it starts with the GP or the hospital doctor referring the patient into us because it's not for everybody. The patient will be in their own home. We need to make sure they feel safe and secure and it's the right place for them to be cared for. So those conversations have got to take place at the start. We then, when we speak to patients, have got to find out what's been going on for them, what their understanding of their illness is and what they believe the expectations are going forward for their health and their care. Then we would hope to um, tell them a little bit about the treatments or the investigations that we would propose. And we try and use that brand questionnaire to make sure we're covering everything and giving patients the chance to discuss um, the benefits, the risks, the alternatives and what would happen if they did nothing with every step of their care. We also would find out, and it's very important to us in hospital at home, what matters to patients. So what matters today, but what matters going forward for their care. How have patients, carers, families, individuals responded to the hospital at home approach? Oh, I think they've loved it, to be honest, I think, for the population that we look after. So we look after older people um, who have maybe had a period of illness before they've come to us, um, involving them in decisions about where they're cared for and how they're cared for. Families and patients love it. Um, they feel safe and secure at home, mostly they tend to get better quicker. They're involved in every decision along the way, whether it be, do they go into hospital? Do they stay with us? Do we do blood tests? Do we not? Do we do investigations? Do we not? They're involved at every step. And they tend to get better so much quicker that families are pleased with that. Can I tell you, do, do you feel the benefits as individually and collecti collectively as a team for the hospital at home? And uh, getting to meet people in the environment that they live in as well? Absolutely. So. I think it transfers a lot of the control back to the patients and the carers, doesn't it? Because we're on their patch. It's not like hospital where you're in our patch. Yeah. Um, so I find that we build up really good relationships. When you're speaking to people, when you're listening, when they're really feeling heard, you know, you build up trust and relationships with people a lot quicker. It's a lot more of an open conversation, we feel. Um, and we're talking about things going forward and preparing people for the future. And whilst a lot of people would think that would make our patients feel anxious, it actually makes them feel reassured that they're listened, they're heard to, and we'll be working towards what matters to them for their care going forward. Well, what's the easiest way for individuals, families to, to get involved in being part, you know, equal part on that conversation about their health care? So we hope that we're training everybody in health and social care to have shared decision making conversations with patients. However, you're right, patients have their part to play in that. We have information, we have the brand questions that we've mentioned. So um, it's four questions that you can print out from the internet. We've got them on NHS and form. Um, you can print them out and take them with you to hospital appointments or appointments with your GP, your dentist, whoever, um, to discuss the benefits, the risks, the alternatives, and what would happen if I did nothing in any situation that you're having where you're discussing your care going forward. So that would be an easy way to become involved and also try and make sure that you are getting your voice across and that you're um, letting people know what matters to you. And if you don't agree with what's been proposed, feel free to speak up because we want you to be in partnership with us with your care going forward. We've been speaking a lot about shared decision making. What does that mean in reality uh, to you as a professional and to someone you may be supporting? Uh, is this, can you share uh, some more information on that? Absolutely. So I'll tell you about a case from a couple of years ago in general practice that involves shared decision making and really still stays with me now because it was so important at the time. So an elderly man was brought in with the, by his daughter. He'd not been well for a number of months. He'd been losing a lot of weight. He had a terrible cough and problems with his stomach. 
So he came in and he sat down. We went through all the usual history, finding out what had been going on, um, examined him, and then we were getting back together and talking about what we would do. And when I said, um, what would you like to do? He said, I don't want to do anything. I just want to go home and be in my bed. I think I'm dying and that's what I want. That's important to me to be at home in my familiar surroundings. So there was a little bit of uh, unease from his daughter because she wanted to know what was going on to help them prepare for the future. So what we decided at that point was to talk about the benefits and the risks of all the different things that we could do in health and social care. And he went away with his daughter and they spoke about that as a family and then came back and we talked about again emphasising what was important to him but the compromises that they'd made as a family and what I was able to facilitate but he said to me I really want you to write in the referral letter that I'm not going to be put through a scanner I'm not going to get all these other tests I agreed to go and speak to a health professional about this but I don't want turned inside out and I want you to write that down so I did I wrote the referral and wrote we've had this conversation what's really important to him is not to have all these investigations but to try and piece all the bits together for their family so that they could plan going forward. So he went and had a really great conversation with one of my colleagues in secondary care and didn't get all the investigations but got enough information to plan going forward. And the patient went home, spent more time at home and sadly he did die a number of months later. But when I was speaking to his daughter about that experience, she said, you know what, dad felt so empowered. He felt that he was in control of his care and that was really important to him and he died a happy man. And she was telling me about the story of his, her mum who died a number of months before where she'd been in and out of hospital. Nobody had really asked what they wanted to do. Yeah. And even the grieving process for his daughter, for her mum compared to her dad, when things had not gone so well and things did go well, made a huge difference going forward for her grieving. Well, thank you for saying it. sharing such a beautiful story. And there's lots of messages in there because it's, it's also part of recovery, isn't it? Mm -hmm. We, we recover in different ways from yep. different experiences. And I suppose it really emphasises that high quality health and care is all about people and mm -hmm. relationships. Absolutely. Thank you, Jude. No problem.